A rising moon beckons creatures who shun the light of day. They ascend from the abyss and emerge from dark lairs. In the murky shadows of this lightless world, nocturnal predators roam the night, and creatures of darkness inherit the sea. As the sun sets, a changing of the guard takes place in the ocean. Animals of the day take shelter, and the sea is inherited by the creatures of darkness. In the twilight that falls just after sunset, leather bass gather in great number. These are large fish and normally solitary hunters. But this evening is special. Tonight, the leather bass will spawn. Females rise toward the surface to cast their eggs into the sea. Dozens of males follow, competing to surround the eggs with clouds of sperm. Many fish spawn just as the sun sets, in hopes that more of their eggs will survive, concealed by growing darkness. It's a logical strategy, and one that nature has orchestrated into a spectacular annual event. Eight nights after the full moon in August. On this single night of the year, something incredible happens. On this night, the coral reef itself will spawn. Two hours after sunset, coral polyps are swollen to bursting. Suddenly, it begins. Coral polyps erupt, spewing sperm into the night sea. Within minutes, clouds of sperm are drifting over the entire reef like the smoke of an undersea forest fire. And spawning is not confined to a single species of coral. Brain corals release packets of eggs that float toward the surface. In fact, nearly all the coral species on this reef will spawn on this single night. Soon the sea is flooded with galaxies of coral egg packets. It's a brilliant natural strategy. Predators are overwhelmed with food and within minutes can eat no more. The majority of the spawn floats away unharassed. 
Other creatures also grasp the opportunity to spawn when predators are in abeyance. A brittle star stands on tiptoe and releases its spawn to drift away, unmolested, with the eggs and sperm of countless other species. Then returns to its lair in a dark crevice. Soon the sea is filled with clouds of spawn. The reef has cast its progeny to the sea wind. Most will be lost in the deep sea, but some may settle far away, giving birth to new reefs. The hatching spawn of countless species becomes part of the drifting plankton that fills the night sea with life. And the ocean becomes a nutritious soup, hearty enough to feed giants. Like a magic carpet, a 10-foot manta ray skims over the sand. Flaps on either side of her head herd plankton into her enormous mouth. And graceful acrobatics allow her to pass repeatedly through heavy concentrations of plankton as she harvests the sea of tiny prey. Nighttime in a California kelp forest. Here, lobsters are nocturnal scavengers. But tonight, the lobster's need is more urgent than food. Tonight, the lobster will molt. The lobster's exoskeleton is hard as stone. In order to grow, the crustacean must shed its shell once a year. The process begins when the shell splits between head and tail. Every body part must be pulled free of the old shell, including the most delicate feelers. Even the lobster's eyes must be pulled free of their plastic-like casings. The entire process takes about seven minutes, during which the lobster is entirely helpless. Finally, the lobster is free. Now he will drink large volumes of water, causing his body to swell. He will be about one inch longer when his new shell hardens during the next 24 hours. Often, lobsters will eat their cast-off shells to replenish their bodies with calcium. 
But if left behind, other scavengers will take advantage of the discard. A sea cucumber in a field of turtle grass. This animal is little more than a crawling digestive tract. It moves slowly, swallowing sand and organic debris at one end and excreting it from the other. But the sea cucumber has a friend. This strange creature is a pearlfish. He emerges only at night to feed on tiny crustaceans living in the grass. But he never strays far from his intimate friend. For the pearlfish, the sea cucumber is home. When the sun rises or when disturbed, the pearlfish retreats to his dark sanctuary. He locates the anus of the sea cucumber with his nose and inserts his sharp tail. Then, carefully, the pearlfish squirms his way backwards into the digestive tract of his host. A cozy home indeed. Many diurnal fish spend the dark hours slowly drifting through the sea in fitful sleep. Others cower next to the reef in nervous slumber. Some spend the night close to their mates, while others pass the dark hours alone. In this dark world, it's not easy to get a good night's rest. Creatures of the night can be very inconsiderate of sleeping neighbors. And nightmares can be more than just figments of the imagination. Sleeping fish have much to fear from nocturnal predators. White tip reef sharks scour the reef, alert to the faintest odor of prey. A peacock flounder's camouflage is no protection against the shark's powerful sense of smell. He moves off in search of better protection next to the reef. But the movement has alerted the shark, and the predator does not hesitate. Another nocturnal predator uses a more subtle technique. This spectacular creature is a cuttlefish. She hunts the ocean floor relying on highly evolved eyes that can see in almost total darkness. Reef fish sleeping on the sand or near the reef are easy prey for the cuttlefish.
the cuttlefish strike occurs with blinding speed as the animal's amazing weapon fires to ensnare its prey. Only extreme slow motion photography can reveal how this amazing mechanism operates. First, the cuttlefish braces herself by resting tentacles on the sand. Then her body drains itself of color, becoming ghostly white as a strange organ emerges from the center of her nest of tentacles. Slow motion reveals that two tentacles emerge to grasp the fish on either side before dragging it to the cuttlefish's deadly embrace. The open ocean at night. During these lightless hours, swarms of plankton rise from the abyss to feed near the surface. These fall prey to schools of small fish that dance through the night like a spill of quicksilver. Small fish are fed on by schools of jacks and creole fish. And rising to feed on these, are the ultimate creatures of darkness. These are humbled squid. Each is six feet long and weighs nearly 100 pounds, and they may grow twice that size. Normally inhabitants of the deep abyss, Humboldt squid sometimes rise at night to feed near the surface. The snare of tentacles is incredibly deadly. Each sucker disc is lined with needle-sharp hooks. And an enormous sharp beak waits at the center of the ten tentacles. Captured fish has little chance. Hook-lined sucker discs tear skin from flesh, and the enormous beak bites deep, removing fist-sized chunks of meat. These creatures of darkness will attack almost anything, including sharks, humans, and even each other. In the spring, moonlight attracts another squid from the deep abyss. These 12-inch arrows are opalescent squid 
And this is their special night. Stimulated by the light of the moon, millions rise from the depths and begin to mate. It is an orgy of epic proportion. Males grasp females with tentacles flushed red with excitement. The ocean floor is already covered with eggs. And here, the orgy intensifies as the squid's life cycle nears completion. The male uses a special tentacle to place his sperm beneath the female's mantle. The female produces an egg case that is nearly the length of her body. Then she begins searching for a place to plant it. Before leaving her egg, she must dig several inches into the sand where she deposits an anchor on the end of a silken thread. All night, the frenzy continues. And the opportunity is not ignored by predators. Seagulls dive from above, plucking away any squid that rises too close to the surface. From below, pelagic stingrays soar through the schools, trapping squid with dexterous wings. On the bottom, bat rays blunder through the school, their stomachs full to bursting. But tonight, the opalescent squid have no fears of predators. Their only purpose was to reproduce, and with that accomplished, the entire school begins to die. They die faster than predators can consume them. Soon the ocean floor is littered with their corpses. Sunrise brings an end to the special night of the squid. But beneath the surface, a carpet of squid eggs covers the ocean floor for miles. Nocturnal predators have consumed their fill, yet dead and dying squid still remain to satisfy diurnal scavengers.
But for the squid, this is only the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. For the squid's legacy remains. And soon these translucent vessels begin to dissolve, freeing tiny jewel-like progeny, which drift away by the millions to inherit the sea. <laughs>